العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم <تصفيق> طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله سوف نستعين في فقه كلاس ان شاء الله من الجسالكين we started كتاب البيوع we've had about three lessons and the last point that we were on was الربا uh, or interest in usury and today's class, there's a few more uh, masail or issues to do with that that the Shaykh Rahmatullah will mention. Um, we hope to finish the chapter today. <coughs> the rest is pretty simple as long as we've understood the previous principles. The last mas'ala, and by the way, where's the homework? Has everyone got their homework? Huh? You guys had homework, huh? Hmm? Yeah, I only got two papers. No. Ah. You've got it, huh? Taib, okay. I'll take that later on. <coughs> The قاعدة يعني يقول الشيخ رحمة الله عليه والجهل بتماثل كالعلم بتفاضل كما نهى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن بيع المزابنة وهو شراء تمر بتمر في رؤوس النخل متفق عليه. طيب the last مسألة we took or we studied was the قاعدة that the Sheikh رحمه الله mentions. It's more of a tabid, more of a tabid, and we said that the difference is أكل خير. The difference between ah. We said the difference between a ta'bid and a qa'ida is that the qa'ida is more general. The qa'ida goes into a lot of different chapters. <coughs> it can be in, in nikah, talaq, tahara, and so on. Like in the ta'bid is more often than not specific to one specific bab or one specific chapter. So the shaykh says, Al-jahlu bi tamathuli kal ilmi bi tafaduli. We studied in the last lesson that there's mal, there's uh, the wealth, there's mal ribawi, there's mal that can be considered or uh, usury or interest goes into. For example, dhahab, fidda, bur, sha'ir, those six types that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in the hadith of Ubadah, sah? And then we also said there was what? Other types that we make what? So how do we know there's these other types? Yani, qiyas. We do qiyas, or the fuqaha do qiyas. And with that qiyas, they establish that there's other types of mal, other types of wealth that riba is to be found in. Okay? And we looked at the illa, or the reason, and what combines them. We said that dhahab and fidda are united by one illa, which is what? al thamaniya And these other four asnaf, are connected with what illa? Kail or will wasn what du'um? Kail or will wasn what du'um? Either it's measured in weight or measured in volume and it's something that is eaten. Taib. Anything that shares that same illa takes that same rule in. For example, currency, naqd, cash. Naqd, cash takes the same ruling as dhahab wa fidda. So if you want to exchange uh, pound for pound, it needs to be what? The same in what? The same amount and what is the other condition? Taqabud. Yad and biyad. You have to exchange it there and then. So every, every currency is a jins of its own. Dollars are considered one jins. Dhahab is considered one jins. Fidda is silver is considered one jins. Riyals are considered as one. Pounds are considered as one. Is that understood? However, you can change pounds for dollars. Pounds for dollars. Is that understood? They don't have to be equal. Obviously, they won't be equal because there's a variance. Like in what is the other condition? The, the only condition that has to be applied? A taqabud. Tayyip. 
the sheikh says now, وَالْجَهْلُ بِتَمَاثُلِي And if a person is ignorant of whether or not the two items that you're exchanging, whether they're equal or not, if you're ignorant of that, then كَالْعِلْمِ بِتَفَاضُلُ It's as if you know there's a difference. As if you know there's a variance. Meaning, is it permissible to use or not? Is it permissible to have that sort of exchange? No, like, it's not permissible. The evidence or an example of this tabid is the hadith where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he prohibited bay'il muzabana. And muzabana is when you've got dates that are dry. They're called tamag. tamag. Dates that are dry that have been picked maybe a week ago, five days, six days ago. Dates that are dry and then you've got dates that are ratab, they're on, on the palm tree. So they're wet and they're ripe. Okay? They're both what? The dates that are up there and the dates that are here, they're both considered what? Dates. Taib. Lakin, the Messenger sallallahu prohibited exchanging these dates for those dates that are on the tree. Why? Apply the... Uh, and what does that entail? Sah? There's going to be difference because the one that is west, wet and moist, uh, on the tree, that is what fresh and it is heavier. It weighs more, more than the ratab. That's why the Messenger Sallallahu said in the Hadith that is going to come, a young qusu ida jaffa. A young qusu, will it decrease in weight if it becomes dry? طيب. So, the messenger prohibited us from bay' muzabana. Muzabana is what? Exchanging dry dates for dates that are on the palm tree. Why? Because we're not sure if it's equal. Is that understood? So that is an application of, or implementation of this qa'ida, or dabid. وَالْجَهْلُ بِتَمَاثُلْ كَالْجَهْلِ بِتَفَاضُلْ before moving on, there's three things that we want to study. And there's three things or three different things that I want you to know. Riba, interest in general, is of three types. Riba fadl, which is the top one. Riba and nasia, which is the second one. And riba al qard. Okay. Riba al fadl, as you can see on the tarif, as ziyada to fi bay'i ribawi bi jinsihi. As ziyada to, you're increasing two things that are the same, but one is more than the other. For example, so for the first one, exchanging 100 grams of gold for 120 grams of gold. Gold and gold, they're what? The same. But you've increased one over the other, right? That is riba al-fadl. What was the condition? They needed to be equal, sah? Right? Now they're not equal. 100 grams of gold for 120 grams of gold. That is called what? Riba al-fadl. Hundred grams of gold for a hundred and twenty grams of gold. That is not permissible, is it? Why not? Hundred grams of gold for hundred and twenty grams of gold. Not permissible. Why? Because gold and gold, this gold and this gold are exactly the same. Therefore we need to have two conditions. They need to be equal and they need to be hand in hand. Is that understood? Riba al Fadl. Then there's a second type, which is riba nasiya, which is delaying. That is bay'u ribawi bi ribawi ma'a adam taqabud. So, for example, exchanging 100 grams of gold for 120 grams of silver. Is this permissible? 100 grams of gold for 120 grams of silver. 
So it's permissible. It's a different gins. Gold and silver are completely different. Lacking what needs to be done, what condition needs to be met. A taqabud. You need to do exchange it hand for hand. So if I say to you, I'm going to give you 100 grams of gold, and you give me 120 grams of silver, that can give it to me in a week's time. That is called riba and nasi'ah. Exchanging two things that are both ribawi, that wealth that is ribawi, that you're meant to exchange hand for hand. That you're meant to have taqabud. For example, uh, 20 kilos of dates. For 40 kilos of grain. Is this permissible? With what condition though? Taqabud. Okay, so if I want to exchange 20 of this for 40 of that, it needs to be immediate, right? Like if I delay it, what does it become? Riba nasiya. From the brothers, who can give me an example of riba fadl? Huh? 50 gram of flour of flour. Excellent. Flour, flour. Same, same. Okay? Sisters, can you give me an example of riba nasiya? You've already studied this. I, the only thing that is new to you now is the terminology fadl and nasiya. Nothing else. You've already studied it. And you've already given in homework on it. But it's important that we learn these terminologies because it's in, it's in the works of the fuqaha. Go on. Do you want to sell or exchange 200 grams of dates for 50 grams of salt? Or do you want okay, 200 grams of, what was it, dates? Dates for two grams, what? 50 grams of salt. Is that permissible first and foremost? Huh? Why is it permissible? Huh? Two different gins? What is the only condition that needs to be applied? Huh? So if I delay this and say, listen, I'm going to give you the salt next week. Is that permissible? Is that permissible? No, it's not permissible. That is riba and nasiya. So you've understood those two. The third one, riba al-qard. Riba al-qard, as you know, these two are both what? Buying and selling. You are buying grams of gold for grams of gold, right? Are you was buying dates and gram, grain? You were buying dates and salt. All of these, this, 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 and that, they, you're exchanging something. It's buying and selling, right? It's buying and selling. So riba al-fadl is buying and selling. Riba al-nasiya is buying and selling. Mu'awadah. You give me something and I give you something. However, riba al-qagd, this is the riba that falls into debts. This is the riba that falls into debts. And this is the riba that was known in Jahiliyyah. The riba that was known in Jahiliyyah. And it is the riba that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith of Jabir. The hadith of Jabir, where did it pass us? Kitab al-Hajj. And he said, riba al-Jahiliyyah mawdu'un. Kama qal Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? What's the surah? How is it? Or how does it happen? A person would lend another, mathalan, 10 dinar or 10 dirhams. Taib. Or he would lend him 100 sa, 100 kilos of dates. And he would say to him, I want you to give me, uh, uh, 50 pounds. I want you to give me 50 pounds in three months' time. So he's given him the dates, but he's expecting him to give him what? 50 pounds or 50 dirhams when? Three months time. When those three months pass, that person has to what? Pay his debt. He has to give him the money, sir. Lakin he doesn't have it. So what does this person say? Well, if that's the case, I'll give you an extra 
three months, but instead of giving me 50 dirhams back, I want you to give me 100 dirhams back. Is that understood? And this is vast, it can happen in anything. You know, with these two, we were talking about six types of wealth, right? It can only happen in six types of wealth. Like in with riba, al qard with debts, it can be applied on anything. If I lend you a mobile phone, and then you say to me, if I lend you a mobile phone, this is a qard. La, that example I gave was bay. Sorry. That example I gave was bay. That example I gave of the 50, that was bay. La, afwan. Al qard is not ma'awada, you're not exchanging anything. A person lends him 100 grams of dates. He has to give him back 100 grams of dates, right? If I lend you 100 pounds, I expect you to give me back how much? 100 pounds. So you say, I'm going to give you 100 pounds in three months. I'm going to pay your debt in three months. When those three months pass by, you say to me, um, you say to me, La, I don't have the 100 pounds that I was meant to pay to you. I say, La, don't worry, it doesn't matter. I'll give you an extension of six months. But in six months, instead of giving me 100, I want you to give me 200. Because I've given you an extra six months. Is that understood? Is that understood? So ignore the first example I gave you. That was an example of bay. Like in that example of qagd is the one that I've just given you. You lend someone something, and when it's time for them to pay it back, they don't have it, and then you say to him, La, I want you to uh, give me extra. I'm going to give you more time. But with that more time comes what? Comes what? An extra amount. Is that understood? We'll get to that inshallah anyway. The, 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 the Martin or the Sheikh will mention it. Rahimahullah. Taib. So that masala that we talked about is Muzabana. What is Muzabana? Exchanging dry dates for fresh dates. وَرَخَّصَ فِي الْعَرَايَ فِي بَيْعِ الْعَرَايَ بِخَرْسِهَا فِي مَا دُونَ خَمْسَةِ أَوْسُقٍ لِلْمُحْتَاجِ إِلَى رُطَبٍ وَلَا ثَمَنٍ عِنْدَهُ يَشْتَرِي بِهِ بِخَرْسِهَا The Sheikh said, what? Well, it mentioned the hadith where Muzabana is haram. Okay. However, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a concession. Although it is haram to sell dry dates, dry dates for dates that are on the palm tree that haven't been picked yet, although that is haram, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a concession in one example, or for one thing, which is Bay'ul Araya. Bay'ul Araya, it's on your mutton, it's on the mutton. It is a transaction of dates by way of estimation. Lakin, in that which is less than khamsat awsuq. It has to be less than khamsat awsuq, which is about 600 kilos. Which is about 600 kilos. So the Messenger وسلم, allowed this type of transaction. Why? Lil muhtaj, for the person that needs it to use it and to enjoy it as fruit. To enjoy it as fruit. Because in Medina, they were people who used to, they were farmers. They were farmers, and so they used to have their gardens and you know, the, the, um, their farms and they got their palm trees. And there were obviously certain times that there was a season for dates to be harvested. Tayyip. If the, see, if it was the season for dates to be picked, the poor people may not find money, cash, to buy the dates that are fresh. Like in they, may, they may have old dates that have been, or that they picked maybe a month ago, three weeks ago, whatever it may be. So the messenger allowed them due to this need of being able to enjoy exactly what those people that have cash or money enjoy. So this was a concession from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For those that don't have cash, that's as the, 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 the mutton says, because that's the madhab of the Hanabila, and بِخَرْسِهَا It has to be an estimation. It has to be an estimation. Why? Because obviously you don't know if these dates are equal to those dates up there. So there's bay al mazabana which is haram. Like in the messenger allowed a certain type which is called al-araya and he made it permissible. طيب. If you don't understand it, inshallah you'll understand in the future. It's because we're not farmers, that's why we don't understand it. We don't deal with dates. 
وَمِنَ الشُّرُودِ The Sheikh says, Rahimahullah, and from the shurud of what? وَمِنَ الشُّرُودِ Shurud what? وَمِنَ الشُّرُودِ الْبَيْعِ أَلَّا يَقَعَ الْعَقْدُ عَلَى مُحَرَّمٍ شَرْعًا إِمَّا لِعَيْنِهِ كَمَا نَهَا عَنْ نَهِي كَمَا نَهَا النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم عَنْ بَيْعِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْتَةِ وَالْأَصْنَامِ وَإِمَّا لِمَا يَتَرَتَّبُ The Sheikh is now going to say, or is telling us, that there's an extra condition, which is about the fifth condition. Which is about the fifth condition for bay'ah. And he says, أَلَّا يَقَعَ الْعَقْدُ The contract can't be based upon, it can't be on something that is muharram shar'an. That is legally in the sharia haram. إِمَّا لِعَيْنِهِ Either because of what it is itself, or because of what comes about because of it. So the Sheikh says, إِمَّا لِعَيْنِهِ كَمَا أَنَّهَا النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَنْ بَيْنِ الْخَمْرِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْتَ أَنْ أَصْنَامِ أَحَرَام It is impermissible to sell haram, uh, khamr. Why? Because khamr itself is haram. And by you selling it, you're going against the verse where Allah says, وَلَا تَعَاوُنُ عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Do not cooperate with evil and transgression. طيب. Also the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, 10 people are cursed with regards to with regards to alcohol. Not only the drinker, the one that's drinking it, but the one that's making it, the one that's transporting it, the one that's helping make it and so on. The one that's picking the grapes. All of these people are cursed with regards to the khamar. So it is impermissible to sell alcohol. It is also impermissible to sell the mater, as the Messenger وسلم, also said, and al-asnam, asnam, <coughs> idols, idols. And what comes under that is also <coughs> selling musical instruments. Also selling Christmas trees, Christmas cards. It's haram. Unfortunately, you find a lot of Muslims selling Christmas trees in the West. Selling Christmas cards, Christmas uh, uh, gift wrap and so on. All uh, decorations, decorations, all of that is muharram. All of that. Uh, painting? Painting? Painting of? Painting, of? Of? Of him. <coughs> it can fall into that, yes, because that is muharram. Mm. That is muharram, so portraits or paintings or pictures and so on, that can also come into it. Tayyib. Tayyib. Also, khinzir and all of that is also muharram because of its, and, uh, because it's muharram, obviously. Al kelp also, dogs, it is haram and impermissible to sell. It is haram and impermissible to sell. Lakin the Malikiyah, some of the Malikiyah, they, uh, they, they make an exemption, which is if a person needs to use as a, as one as a guide dog for hunting, as security, and they can't get access to a dog, then it is permissible for them to, to buy one. Only in that situation. So it's either, there are things that the Sheikh says that are haram in of itself, like khamar and those things that we also discussed. وَإِمَّا لِمَا يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ قَطِيعَةِ الْمُسْلِمِ كما نهى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن بيع عن البيع على بيع المسلم وشراء على بيع على شرائه والنجش متفق عليه. طيب. Then the Sheikh says there are things that are impermissible because of themselves. لكن there are things that are permissible, be impermissible because of what comes about after it, because of what it leads to. And then he mentioned صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then he mentioned the hadith of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Having or selling something at the expense of your brother. So your brother, مثلا, a Muslim, is about to sell something. A Muslim shopkeeper is about to sell something. And you're in the shop, you happen to be in the shop. And they're about to do the transaction. And then he says, I'm going to sell this, uh, this watch to you for £100. And then you look at the person, that's the customer, you look at the customer, you say... Huh? Or you send them a message Say listen I can sell that to you for 80 quid 20 pound cheaper That is muharram That is muharram You're oppressing who? The shopkeeper The shopkeeper Or, you can, or the opposite The one that's <coughs> You can oppress methylene, Or the opposite For example a person wants to buy Or sell an item And the shopkeeper Is willing to buy it from him if it's a pawnbroker or whatever. And then you say to him, listen, there's someone else that wants to buy it for more, so don't. In this case, who have you oppressed? The shopkeeper. 
He was about to buy an item that was cheap. Or the, shir, or the Messenger of Allah and the third thing is a najish. A najish is, a najish is, is you know, auctions. Auctions, what happens sometimes, or even on eBay, bidding, that's what it is. When you outbid someone, lacking in order to harm him, or in order to do the seller a favor, or just for, just, just for the sake of it. Some people, they're just nuisance, they like causing nuisance. So for example, if someone's selling a mobile phone, phone on eBay, and the starting bid is 500 pounds. Someone makes a genuine bid for £510. Someone else, who's someone who's not genuine, he may have made an agreement with the seller or he may just dislike that specific person that wants to buy the item. So he says that like 550 So what happens? The one that genuinely wants to buy it, because he needs the item, he'll say, okay, type 570 And the one that has no interest in it, that has no reason to do it. He just says, well, I'm £600. He doesn't mind increasing the price because he's not going to buy it anyway. So he says £600. And he carries on doing that. Whether it's for the benefit of the seller or whether he hates or dislikes the person that's buying it or whether it's just for the sake of it. You may ask, why would anyone want to do that? So, why would anyone want to waste their time? Do you not remember when everyone was in lockdown and then... Uh, a lot of lessons and lectures were taking place on Zoom. Do you not remember some low lives just logging on for the sake of it and swearing at everybody? Uh, trolls, yeah. It happened to us. One of the classes, <laughs> some low life came on and started swearing at us. Look at that, exactly. So there are low lives out there that just didn't, don't have anything to do. They don't have anything to do. So they go around auctions and harming people. <laughs> also, naam. Uh, 